Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, you're going to get to see some of my matches in the MCQ, the Mythic Championship Qualifier on Magic Arena. I will be playing one of my favorite decks that I think is decently positioned today, and that is Esper Control. My main deck is definitely slanted against aggro decks. Mono Red was the most popular deck in the last MCQ. I don't believe it will be the most popular one this time, but I believe Vampires will be. So I'm expecting plenty of Mono Red and Vampires, followed by Scape Shift and other Esper decks. And against those, we really need to lean on Narset, Part of the Veils, and Bolus's Citadel to get us way ahead in those matchups so that we can overpower them. We still have a copy of the Elder Spell hanging out to get those Teferi ultimates. We beat the opponent up with Basilica Bellhaunt. I guess some noticeable some notable changes would be the Kai's Wraths and the Bolus's Citadel. I got absolutely smashed by this in a Fandom Legends event, but in multiple games, and it really warped the way that the matchup play out, the matchups play out. Without counter magic being reliable anymore because of Teferi Time Raveler, a card like the Citadel can quickly take over the game, becoming a kind of experimental frenzy for Esper Mirrors. So we're rolling with the Citadel today. Kaya's Wrath is a card that everybody knows about and everybody plays around. By cutting it back and focusing on spot removal that hits more of the difficult to remove things like Adanto Vanguard and gains life like Oath of Kaya and still sweeps the board like Legion's End, my Kaya's Wrath can hopefully be more of a selective hit on the sweeper side than an absolute must. The sideboard is a lot of supplemental removal in Devout Decree, Noxious Grasp. We also have two more Elder Spells for Super Friends matchups, which I think could be popular and probably are my toughest matchup. Three Duress and two Vetoes to help fight in the Mirrors, which I do think will come up. Despark, just as an all-around good guy spell, except against Vampires in red, so it's now a sideboard piece. An Ashiok for the Mill win, maybe we'll get to do that once. Also good against Scapeshift. Ego, very good against Scapeshift and Nexus of Fate. And we have a Command the Dreadhorde for kind of, it's kind of like a third Citadel, but you don't want three Citadels because they're legendary, so you bring in a Command. So you have three ways to go over the top of your slow opponent. Hopefully the deck will be solid enough against aggro. Um, on the sideboard plan, my main worry is that after I bring in some Devout Decrees and, or some Noxious Grasps that I have enough removal to compete head-to-head -head with aggro decks in post-sideboard games. And I'm not 100% sure that's right. Without Cry of the Canarium and with two Wraths, I'm a little nervous that I will get run over by an aggro deck who plays just completely all out and I'm sort of counting on the restraint of my aggro opponents. I want them to play what they consider smart and not be walking into Kaya's Wraths at moments when I don't even have the card. Anyway, that's my take on the format in a quick nutshell, the list I'm running with, and let's go battle. If nothing else, I have some sweet sleeves to show for my effort. Going 10 and two in matches is a tremendous task that even the best in the world struggle to do. If I'm able to get anything close to a respectable record, I'll be very pleased with myself today. And I think that even real pros, while they will compete to win at all times, know that it is a tremendous task. All right, we're on the play, off to a great start. And this hand should be good against most of what the format can throw at us, so I'll keep it. What do you think they brought for us? You'll see that in tournament match, we have a 30 minute timer. I'm not even, I'm not worried about that. I may not talk through my plays as much as I always do, especially if my timer starts getting low, but I will uh, play pretty quickly. And I may not talk through, like I said, I may not talk through everything. I'm confident that I can play Esper Control fast enough to finish my games. The opponent on the other hand is already running that clock. As you see, ours is sitting pretty. Theirs is ticking down. And it's on. We got this sweet arena crowd in this theater. You'll see when we play Mythics, the different guilds kind of cheer for the Mythic in their colors. Confetti, yay! Make some, make some noise. All right, right away we hit vampires. No rest for the wicked here. I think we get right into the hand with a Thought Erasure, although we want to make sure, like, the weakest part of this hand is Sorin. So we want to make sure that we hit, can hit a Sorin if we see one. 
It could mean we wait another turn on this Thought Erasure, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be feisty about it and get right in there. Oh, it's... What on earth am I playing against? This is some kind of a Jund brew. Well, that's very fresh. So Legion's End has no problem with Growth Chamber Guardian, but it also has no problem with the Knight. I think taking the Ooze as the biggest, most powerful threat in the hand is probably the right play. The opponent will play the Guardian and then we can uh, drain it. Yeah, we'll just take the biggest and strongest thing. And well, if I keep their creatures dead, I don't think I have very much to worry about. Not going for the Guardian and pulling another Knight of the Evan Legion. Okay. Fine, two knights, one spell. You gotta assume the Growth Chamber Guardian will be on the way now, and we can cut off the Growth Chamber Chain. We could also Legion's End the Growth Chamber Guardian, which, if the opponent drew another, is the highest upside play, so we may as well. Another ooze. All right, we're gonna need to keep Kai's Wrath around for that. Opponent basically picking out Jun threats they really like. Okay, Teferi will meet an Assassin's Trophy most certainly. We could wait for another Thought Erasure. I like getting the card though, and just getting the uh, ramp out of the way. We only have one more basic in the deck, so let's make sure we get to use it. If we drew the swamp, we wouldn't get a land in, in uh, the future. So, let's go. Trophy. Take the action. Get me my swamp. Draw my card. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. So, does the opponent have the land? Is it ooze time? As soon as we can stabilize and get a pass back from an empty board, Citadel can come down. Here we go. Alright, let's let the Wrath wash it away. And see what the opponent has next. Let's see, we have some... No, nope, didn't get there in time. I was going to say, we have uh, open mana, so maybe putting stops down would be the right thing in a tournament setting for this. But let's get the Citadel online. And let's play you. So, they have red for a reason. There might be a lightning strike of s something of that nature, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful. There's our land. There's another citadel, which we definitely don't want to pay to put into play. Just some stops to make it look like we might have a counter. Or instant speed removal. Okay. Girl Spellbreaker. Let's see what the opponent chooses to do. Spellbreaker could go face to reduce my ability to use the Citadel. Can also pick on some Planeswalkers. And there we go. Oath of Kaya off the top. God bless it. All right, land on top, so we'll dig deeper by getting a draw step. No time for a break. Narset, very nice. There's a land we can play for turn. Now we can tick down Narset. There's the Elder spell. The opponent says, good game, good choice. I think we're about to ultimate a Teferi there. And on to game two. We've got Devout Decrees for red and black cards. We saw a few black creatures, but I saw a lot more green. So Noxious Grasp is definitely coming in. I didn't see Planeswalkers. I'm not sure what to Duress. I'm not sure what to Ego. Despark can hit a Biogenic Ooze, but is that really a good trade? I have to imagine the opponent has some big effects, and I don't know what they are. 
Makes the spark look pretty good. I'm really wondering about this decree. We saw that Legion's End was a good card, and Disfigure is a good card against the, the early Vampires and the Growth Chamber Guardian. Without seeing Planeswalkers, though, it's really hard to know what of these cards is best. On the draw, the opponent certainly has a beatdown angle, and it's not clear that Nar like they care about Narset at all. So I'm willing to trim some Narset in one of my Citadels. Actually, being on the draw, I think what we can do is trim a land. And what did we cut out? A little bit of blue. So I can trim a land. I'm just deciding which land to trim. We saw Assassin's Trophy, so we don't want to trim the basics. So because of that, we'll take out an Isolated Chapel because we'll probably get our basics thanks to Assassin's Trophy. I'm going to keep the Bell Haunt. The opponent seems to have some kind of an aggressive slant. I do feel like the weakest card here is Narset. It gets me some extra cards, but on the draw it might just get me tempoed out of the game, so I am going to add one Devout Decree. That red has to be for something. And then we go battle. Pretty good hand, mostly castable with the land draw, will be completely castable. And an immediate duress from the opponent, not surprising, but which removal spell would you like to take? They all do just about the same thing, so taking a one for one trade when my opponent is on the play is perfectly fine, since we'll be up a card from being on the draw. And since they all do so close to the same thing, I don't think it matters very much. The Legion's End is the selection. If we play the Swamp, the Disfigure is immediately open and we can keep the board clear. I don't know if that's very important, to be honest, but let's at, let's at least have the option. Let's leave ourselves the option of Disfiguring this turn. Next turn, the plan is the Tapped ho Hollowed Fountain, unless, of course, I draw Thought Erasure off the top. The opponent thinking about how to attack this hand. It does look like a challenging one. Which creature do I offer up as fodder? probably what's going through the mind and the selection is the knight of the ebon legion we'll just figure that right away just to keep complete parity for a while devout decree off the top more removal <laughs> merfolk branchwalker so our opponent a very interesting mix we saw a Gruul Spellbreaker, which makes me really want to hold an Oath of Kaya, so I'm going to also disfigure this Branch Walker. Although Growth Chamber Guardian's a real problem, too. But for now, we'll go here. The Legion's End does sort of imply it. What do you think? Is there a Veil of Autumn in this hand? Is that w the stick that we see? Cinder Vines. Okay, that's going to make me pay life whenever I play an instant or sorcery, a non-creature spell. And two damage plus blow up an artifact or enchantment. Okay. It's not very proactive though. It can have a it can have nasty effects over time, but right this minute it's not a proactive card. Okay. The opponent wants to do a lot of Cinder Vinage. And we've got a critter. Won't matter if we're tapped out. Bell Haunt on the stack. What a good time for a Bell Haunt facing a couple of Cinder Vines. Opponent's tanking. Maybe they have an Assassin's Trophy. Is this an Assassin's Trophyable card? What a 3 for 1 that would be. And it's a Veil of Summer. Oh my. So the Veil of Summer was in the hand. So what did the opponent keep? It might be another Veil of Summer. It might be an Assassin's Trophy. Those are the two cards that come to mind. The Cinder Vines are holding priority on their own, so we don't have a lot of information about the hand. Okay. Is it time? It's the ooze. They held an ooze. Wow. All right. Well, the Oath of Kaias can certainly hit that.
Yep, and I think that's exactly where we want to be. Cindervine damage, Biogenic Ooze token down. So do I defend my life total or do I beat down? I think I can wait to beat down. My opponent's empty handed. I can beat down next turn. The life can be an issue. It's basically a resource here that the Cinder Vines are going to be taxing for most of the game. So giving up three life could be a big mistake. Shall we go in for a Thought Erasure on this card in hand? If it were relevant, I guess the, big, the best card it could be is a Veil of Summer, which we could get out of the hand. What we really want to avoid is some kind of a lightning strike or instant speed hit on this bell hunt. Let's go for it. We'll take some Cindervine damage. Not a lot to be done there. Resolving. Ooh, the Spawn of Mayhem gets kicked out. And we have on top of the deck a Teferi Time Raveler. It's not a land for the other Teferi, but I'll take it. It's a very strong card. Let's go get him. Start turning the tide. And let's play this now before our opponent can draw a Veil of Summer. We're gonna hope our opponent doesn't draw Nyssa after that. That would be a very sad case. And we left the door a little bit open for it. Growth Chamber Guardian. It's a good one. That's a pretty nice draw. If I left up the decree, maybe things would have gone differently. Hmm. Let's go ahead and run out the Time Raveler and bounce the Guardian. We're going to need to draw probably another Legion's End, some kind of a Guardian solution. The Guardian value could be very strong in this game. It's certainly turning out grindy. But we can set him back and get an attack step in. And another Bell Haunt is pretty nice against the Guardians. The opponent will almost certainly play Guardian and adapt Guardian. They don't want to leave me an opportunity to kill off the Guardian with the Oath of Kaya, so they're going to still have one in their hand at least. Here we go. Oh my, they do not adapt the Guardian. I guess they have a backup, but I can knock it out of the hand. But can I kill this one? I guess I can't. We know we're plussing here. here we go. So do we use the Oath of Kaya now? We can also use this Devout Decree to get rid of you. At instant speed, I might add. We can pay two life, Oath of Kaya this. And then save this, because the opponent will play the Growth Chamber Guardian. They will adapt it. Then we make them discard the other one. It's not the worst. All right. And we're not going to play. The other option is to play Teferi, draw a card. But then the opponent gets to attack with their Growth Chamber Guardian, which I hate. Yep, this hurts. You can feel it adding up. I'm, I'm clicking. There we go. Do not need another land, so good scry. Get a land out of the way. Alright, down to 11. Pressuring the life total a bit for the opponent, which is good, because we're going to need to end the game. In the long, long game, the Cinder Vines come into play. There is the Guardian. Three mana can adapt, and another two can cast the other Guardian if the opponent wants to. I'm really curious to see if they do that or not. If they play around Bell Haunt or if they play around Spot Removal. And they play around nothing. Very, very good. Well done. All right. So here, I suppose we can Teferi Tuck the Guardian. You show remorse. I'll show 
And by play around nothing, I mean that they didn't leave me an opportunity to bell haunt or spot removal. It's a pretty good play. It's pretty slick. I wasn't making fun of it when I said play around nothing. Into the deck with you. So we get another hit in. And now the Teferi is on the board. Our opponent down to eight. One of my favorite tricks is not really an option. Uh, Teferi Time Raveler bouncing Oath of Kaya. It doesn't look very good when there are two Cinder Vines on the battlefield that can be sacrificed to target the Oath. Maybe we'll find a way to use that to our advantage. All right, Guardian is back in the hand. The opponent moving at instant speed this time and now playing them both out, which does make sense. It does make sense because now we have a Teferi on the battlefield that needs to be pressured. Let's skip to the good part. Okay, now, right now, the opponent can't target this with the Cinder Vines, so we can bounce the Oath of Kaya. We can cast down the other Guardian. We don't know what we would be Bell Haunting. So I think we save it. Although getting it out there could be very strong, and the opponent can't adapt this right now, and we're going to untap two mana for the cast down. So I think that all is good. Um, all right, let's play a Bell Haunt. Down goes another Veil of Summer, wow. Let's bounce this Guardian. A Thought Erasure is a perfect draw. But before we use it, let's attack. Make our opponent make the choice about protecting their life total or not, which they don't. It's fine. Remember, we're untapping two mana for the cast down. Guardian gone. Land, you can go. It's definitely a battle of spells here. Our opponent can double adapt the Guardian, which is frustrating, but it forces them to use up all their mana, and it still kills off the Guardian. Alright, off the top, what have you got? Gruel Spellbreaker. Well, that is also a good cast down target. Or a Time Raveler target. But actually, we just have the, we have the game. So, here we go. Cast you down. Doesn't matter which. Now we can Teferi Time Ravel bounce the other. Those Cinder Vines, they were there, but they didn't. They didn't get us quite below 10. And now we bounce here, attack for lethal, and that's the game.